Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for the first Sunday after Christmas. It is Monday, December 28th. Um, the church has always set aside the three days immediately after Christmas uh, to commemorate uh, three different uh, individuals or groups of individuals. December 26th was always set apart to commemorate St. Stephen. Or Stephen. Uh, December 27th, St. John the Evangelist. And December 28th, the Holy Innocents, the, the little children martyred in Bethlehem for their likeness to the Christ child from, from Matthew chapter 2. I recognize it's already December 28th, but I thought for our next three days of devotions, we would just take up those three commemorations. So, so today our focus is on St. Stephen. We begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me, and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. And to us the Christ is born. Let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Amen. For our scripture lesson today, we turn to Acts chapter 7. The context is this. Stephen was dragged out for that which he was preaching, and, and he couldn't help but testify to who Christ was and who Christ is. And, and I'll pick up Acts chapter 7 um, at verse 51. His preachment you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ear, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so did you. And you can imagine how that went over. Verse 54. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul approved of his execution. Why St. Stephen's Day, the day right after Christmas? Could it be that the church recognized early on that this brings into a, a sharp focus what it is that, that Christmas is all about? We're told that Stephen looked up to heaven and he saw the glory of God. Well, what was his glory? His glory was to be born. And you know the reason for that birth. To suffer, to die, to offer his life for the likes of Stephen. You know, um, the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, it turns out words hurt and sticks and stones um, hurt as well. And, and I guess my first point is, you see what, what Stephen died for. He didn't die for nothing. He died with an honest confession on his lips. He, he could not help but proclaim to a world gone mad who this Christ child was, who this Christ was, and who this Christ was for. A second thing maybe that I take away from Acts chapter 7 is that beautiful prayer of Stephen as he's being stoned to death, falling to his knees, Lord, do not hold his sin against him. You see, his Lord Jesus Christ had taught him how to face his enemies and taught him how to face death. 
and I think about those who we don't agree with. I think about enemies of the gospel and 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 enemies down here below. And and I just think how easy it is to want our enemies downfall and to want our enemies destruction and and the faithful testimony of Stephen is he saw his enemies um, as another one for whom the Christ died. And he wanted nothing for them but for their salvation. I think that's an interesting way to meet people again this very day. To desire for them nothing but their salvation. And you know who is their salvation. And the Lord has given you ears to hear, hearts to believe, mouths to confess his saving name. And maybe a third takeaway that's always kind of interesting. <clears throat> as Saul was there. Um, not, we're not told picking up stones to stone Stephen, but but holding cloaks and nodding his head and giving approval um, that because of the Christ child whom Stephen confessed and and who later Saul confessed this this brother Paul just a couple chapters later in Acts when the Lord converted him um, Stephen and Paul are now brothers um, in the eternal mansions of heaven. Um, the gospel has such power for the likes of Saul, for the likes of Stephen, and for the likes of you and me. A prayer. All praise, O Lord, for Stephen, who martyred saw you stand, to help in time of torment, to plead at God's right hand. Like you, our suffering Savior, his enemies he blessed, with, Lord, receive my spirit, his faith in death confessed. The Lord give you such a confession in living and in dying. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your servants with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in mercy you sent your one and only Son to take upon himself our human nature. By his gracious coming, deliver us from the corruption of our sin, and transform us into the likeness of his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Just a reminder, there is worship this evening, Monday at 6.45 p.m., also a special service coming up this New Year's Eve, Thursday at 5 p.m. Have a blessed Monday and a blessed week in the Lord.